This is the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast with Nick Cavins. All right, Greg, so we got some breaking news. We have an emergency live podcast happening right now. I'm sure a lot of Patriots fans are steaming about the news this morning that Cam Newton is returning to New England. It's a one-year deal, up to $14 million. Now, Mike Reese has since tweeted out that $6 million of that $14 million is incentive-based, based on honors, mm-hmm. the NFL honors awards that they give out, and also playoff incentives. Your take on this deal, your take on the news, Greg. Okay, so to talk people off the ledge a little bit, (laughs) um, (laughs) uh, the overriding thing I want people to keep in mind is this does not preclude the Patriots from doing anything else at the quarterback position. Right. This does not mean Cam Newton is the no-doubt starter for next year. So in a sense, nothing has really changed from towards the end of last season when we were talking about this there was even the Schefter report I think was that the final game before the final game where he basically said uh both sides are going to try to move on or basically move on or something like that and then Bill's like that's not what he said and uh, you know look I think what has nothing's really changed in my mind and from talking to people nothing's really changed um Cam is still not the no doubt starter to me the reason for the timing in all of this just to me what it tells me is that the patriots don't have any faith or have been flat out told no there is going to be no movement in the quarterback market the 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 let's call it the corollary quarterback market whether it's garoppolo darnold even gardner Minshew, i don't think is available right now i think we're talking about teams that and we talked about this in the past couple of weeks, Nick, where you know we talked about how the timing was not on the Patriots' side, and they needed to go to Plan B, Plan C that wouldn't preclude them from Plan A. And to me, in my mind, this is that step. Now, fans are going. Most of the fans are going to hate it. I understand that, and you'll get all sorts of backpedaling and excuse making from. Uh, you know, people who are supporters of the Patriots and things like that. And we've already heard some of it where, you know, he didn't have any weapons last year. He had no camp. You know, he could do this X, Y, and Z. Look, the way I understand the contract, it is more along the lines of what he made last year, about six and a half million. That's sort of the base. Even if that's guaranteed, Nick, that doesn't mean that they can't do anything else. You know, Guaranteed, they could cut. I assume Belichick and Cam have some sort of understanding that says, "Like, look, we want to back. You, you might not be the guy. You could be the guy, but we can't tell you that right now. But you give us the best chance right now that we need to get somebody in place as we start free agency, where we can go to Hunter Henry or uh, Nelson Aguilar or Corey Davis or whoever, and say, look." Newton, Cam Newton could be texting those guys and like, hey, you'll love it here and all this stuff, as opposed to the alternative was, yeah, we we, we have Jared Stidham. And uh, right. Stid's calling him up being like, um, guys, how about you come play? Like, that wasn't going to work. So at least the Patriots are moving into a direction where they have something for free agency. And the baseline that I want people to remember is this, is, this does not preclude them from doing anything else. Plan A or even plan B is still out there for them. We just have to see whether those dominoes fall. Yeah, and I see a lot of people reacting in the chat right now saying, I can't believe this happened. $14 million, question mark. Again, the base of this deal, according to what Greg has heard so far, is about six, six and a half million dollars. Folks, that's not a lot of money for the quarterback position. It's really not. When you look around the league, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Marcus Mariota, uh, Andy Dalton, those guys last year with the deals, with the incentives, you know, you look at six, six and a half million as the base. It makes sense. It's kind of a high end backup quarterback. And if he starts yeah. and the Patriots give him the gig, then he'll have the chance to get 14 million. But again, 14 million, you're looking at the honor incentives, which means he's got to be like MVP offense. And they got to go to like, yeah, they got to go to at least the final four, or maybe a Super Bowl for him to make all that stuff. Right, right. So look at this deal. I would say look at this deal as 6 million, maybe as much as 7 million, 
to be either the backup quarterback or to have a shot at being the starting quarterback and prove everybody wrong, right? I think all of us watched Greg last year. We watched Cam play the quarterback position. We're not in love with the idea. He throws the football like he's throwing a javelin. But I also agree with you, the name value. You know, try to tell people that Jared Stidham's the guy. If you're trying to sell somebody on a gig, Curtis Samuel is a name that I brought up in our last podcast. You go to Curtis Samuel and you say, hey, Curtis, we got Jared Stidham. You, you think Samuel's going to be pumped and jacked about that? I don't think it's the end all be all, but I do think yeah. it helps. Another thing, Greg, that I think this tells us, and maybe I'm wrong, you tell me, I think today, right now, with this deal, it is more likely that Belichick drafts a quarterback than we might have thought three, four, five days ago. Because when you look at this percentage of the cap, I don't think Belichick is going to spend another 8 to 10 to $12 million on another quarterback and, and sit there and say, okay, we appropriated $20 million to the position. That's not what he's going to do. If you're bringing in a new quarterback along with Cam, it's going to be a young guy. Am I right or wrong? I don't think that's necessarily true. I think I think that it's, it could certainly be true. Um, I don't think this tells us one way or the other. I just think that they are at a um, they are at a certain point in time right now where they just don't know what's going to happen. I mean, they don't know. Are the San Francisco 49ers going to get a Sam Darnold or somebody, or are they going to trade up in the draft and get a guy that they want to be their heir apparent or their new starting quarterback that uh, that that Shanahan's like, you know what? Uh, he's he's the guy that we want and we're just gonna we're just gonna go with him. So to me, to me, this deal doesn't say really anything about what they're gonna do. Now you could say that you would you say that it possibly lean it makes it you could say it's easier to see them going, say, you know, quarterback at 15 and pairing him with Newton. I would say that's I would say that's fair. But I just think I trust me, I've talked to the people there. They don't know what's gonna happen. You know, right. they don't know what what I had been told, and we talked about this, you know, about a week, 10 days ago, where I told you <laughs> that I couldn't believe it, but it was basically fait accompli that that Cam Newton was gonna be back in the fold and that within the building, they were basically starting to explain it, um, you know, in a way that they could, um, you know, sort of excuse Belichick and, and make sense of what's going on. And so, so I think that that's been going on. And I just think that, look, we just don't know what's going to happen at the quarterback position. We just don't, we don't know who the San Francisco 49ers are going to get. We don't know if the jets are even going to draft a quarterback at number two and make Sam Darnold available. Right. But I would say, I would say all options are on the table still for the Patriots at this point in time. It's just, they got a guy that, you know, they look at all the different scenarios, like say the Jaguars don't want to trade Minshew, say, the Jets don't want to trade Darnold. Say the San Francisco 49ers don't want to trade Jimmy Garoppolo. Out of all those other options, Cam Newton plus whatever in the draft, to that, that's basically plan B, plan C for the Patriots, and that's the only thing that they can lock up right now and have a known entity there. So that's what this all tells me. Right. Julio Alonso in the chat says, yeah, free agents will be excited to catch passes from Cam. What a joke. Julio, I know we're in the world of overreacting and everybody's going to overreact. That's fine. If you want to treat this as the world is over, you can do that. If Cam's going to be the end all be all, you can do that. That's your opinion. That's good. You know, what I'm saying is as far as trying to sell free agents, do you think Cam is a better selling person, you know, a selling point? Or do you think that Jared Stidham is a better selling point? Or yeah, no and I totally agree with you. Like, or no, yeah. right? Are you going to, are you yeah. going to? Curtis Samuel and say, hey, Curtis, we want you to be the new one, number one wide receiver in New England. Samuel's going to say, okay, who's the quarterback? Well, we've got Jared Stidham or nobody. It, that's not a sell. And, and I'm not telling you that Cam's great. None of us believe that Cam was great last year. Nobody is trying to sell you that. No one's trying to sit there and say, this is an unbelievable move. As Greg said, we have to think about reality. The Patriots are dealing with reality right now. In reality, yeah, it kind of sucks in the moment because you're not going to go out there and get Jimmy G. He might not be available right now. As Greg said, San Francisco is looking to upgrade. If they can't upgrade, then they're not going to deal Jimmy G. And you look at Marcus Mariota. Greg and I have talked about this before. Marcus Mariota has some questions. His leadership, his personality. If you listen to this podcast, 
Greg said a couple of episodes back that the Patriots weren't necessarily sold on the makeup of Mariota. Not that he's a bad guy, but that yep. they don't believe he can be the alpha in the room. They're not sold that he can be that leader, that galvanizing kind of guy. So when you look at the options right now, I don't know how many people have to say it. Greg has said it. I've heard Jeff Howe say it. I've heard a lot of people say this, a lot of insiders. This does not mean that Cam is going to be the starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. They're not going to sit there and end, okay, this is it, we're done. We yeah, don't I, know Nick, what's going to happen. Yeah, I would, I, would just, I would just tell people, just be patient. I know it's hard, and I know there's going to be a lot of moves happening and a lot of cap space moving come, say, Monday when the tampering period starts. But people need to have – patience and they need to look at the entire picture like what happens in the middle of March is not indicative of what the Patriots quarterback room is going to look like in late May after right. free agency after the draft now a couple a couple of things you know Julio mentioned about like you know whether players or go, are going to be enamored with or be attracted to Cam Newton being the quarterback I understand the perception that is out there OK, yep. and I understand how Boston Sports Talk Radio talks about Cam. I know how that we've talked about Cam at times. And and but what you have to understand is that's 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 perception. That is not NFL reality. And understand it when I tell you this. Cam Newton has a wide berth of respect around yep. the league, among yep. players. He has even if you he even if he couldn't throw the ball at the end of last year, he has a lot of respect around the league. All you have to do is. Go look at that I Am Athlete podcast that he was on. And, and and any other time he's with NFL players, those guys all look at him like he is the man. And that is still that is still happening. But I did want to I did want to talk about Nick real quick, is that in terms of the Patriots with Cam, if he ends up being the starter, there are still critical problems with this marriage. And I and I talked to somebody with the Patriots about this when it became apparent to me that Cam was going to be on this roster, that the way they were talking and not dismissing him and sort of saying, well, you know, if we surrounded him with better talent, he would have been better. My point is there's two things with this offense. Number one, you have to win. You have to be able to win before the snap. And right. I just don't see any signs that Cam's going to be able to do that. He didn't at all last year. He never made progress in that regard. And the number one thing in the Patriots offense is – don't run any bad plays. Can he? Can they get him to that point? I think they have confidence they can. I have doubts about that. And the other oh, thing is, uh, hold on, I want to stop. It, you right well, hang on, let me just finish this one last point. The okay. other thing is the sh the throwing motion. It's way too long. Right. It, 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 way too much gather. Like you know, he gets dip in his back shoulder. Like that can't go on because this is a quick hitting offense, and you won't be able to just build it around Cam Newton. They got to meet halfway, and that didn't happen last year. Okay, what I was going to ask you there, and I, I think it goes into what you just said, is bringing Cam back. Again, we don't know if he's going to be the starting quarterback. A lot of people are telling us, you included, got to be patient. Uh, this is to get somebody in the room who is well-respected in the league. It doesn't matter who, you know, what Jimmy in Worcester feels like or, or you know, Johnny in Watertown or even me or you. It, it's not about that. Love it's Johnny about in Watertown. <laughs> The players, the players in the NFL, no matter whether you hate Cam or love him or think he sucks, or the players still respect him. The players still believe mm -hmm. that he's good. It doesn't matter what we think. It matters what they think. And if for years we've been talking about how Bill Belichick has his finger on the pulse and he knows what's going on, trust me, people inside that facility know a hell of a lot more about how people in that league feel about Cam than we do. And this signing tells us that players that they're targeting would be more open to the idea of Cam than Jared Stidham. That's what this tells us. Whether yes. you like it or not doesn't matter. Now, the question that I wanted to get to, uh, Greg, was what you were talking about just a moment ago. You bring Cam in. What's fascinating about this, and it goes along with my draft idea, because I disagree. I do think, I'm not telling you it's a guarantee. I think this tells us that the Patriots are more likely to draft a young quarterback now than they were a week ago. Oh, yeah. I, I think mm, so. I mean, I, I always thought that was in the plans, but yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I think they're more likely. But it begs the question, 
what kind of quarterback are you looking at now? Because is this going to be a situation, Greg, where they bring Cam back and Cam is expected to run the Patriots offense? Or do they realize Cam can't run the offense from A to Z and they're going to tinker with it and they're going to try to tailor the offense a little bit more to what Cam can do? Okay, so a couple offshoots out that, to, to, and we can um, talk about a couple questions. Joel and I think there's another uh, Joelus Damon. They're asking basically like, you know, so one said forget about Mac Jones. Another one said, do you think a rookie QB, if drafted at 15, could start week eight to ten if Cam really struggled? And then yeah. I think this all goes in, all fits in to what we're talking about. And I do think you. I, I just don't think it changes their draft plans. I don't think it changes any of their plans, this move. I think it just it's just backup for them. But I do think I, I think it's it's a legitimate plan. Like Cam Newton uh plus say Mac Jones. I don't think it rules out Mac Jones. I mean, it depends where Mac Jones gets drafted. Do I think the Patriots are gonna go up into the top ten and get a quarterback now? No, but I, I you know, I wouldn't rule it out. And and do I think that say they do get a guy, Trey Lance. Mac Jones, Justin Fields, whoever, and trust me, and, and I reported this, the Patriots think there's a lot of really good depth in this class, and maybe a Kellen Mond or yeah. Jamie Newman or uh, the kid at Stanford, maybe they go in round two or round three, and the Patriots really like those guys. Hey, if they go out there and they they adapt to the offense quicker and they're a quick study and they and they earn it on the field, Heck yes, I I do think that a rookie could be starting midseason for the Patriots. I don't rule that out either. But in terms of what you your point about the scheme, I don't think this necessarily means that they from day one mo create the offense around Cam. I think, and I know um, our buddy uh, Mike uh, had a story about the Patriots offense and you know Cam's fit and things like that. And, you know, whether there's some argument on whether Josh McDaniels did enough to build around Cam or did they just fit Cam into what they wanted to do? I right. look, as soon as Cam got signed last year, you know, McDaniels started tailoring the offense to what they want to do. But it's like I said last year, a billion times, it's always going to be the Patriots offense. All this stuff is built into what the Patriots do. The, the, the thing here, uh, Nick, is. You know, you're hoping with outdoor practices and things like that, that the Patriots will be able to rep this stuff a lot more and say, all right, we've accomplished play A. That allows us to go to play B and have more offshoots where I think they were stuck on plan A considering Cam's COVID status last year and all that. I think that the offense never got to where Josh McDaniels wanted it to go just because of the offseason, Cam's COVID, you know, how they stunk on offense at one point. You know, at the middle of the season, they had to go back to basics. I mean, they probably had one of the most basic NFL offenses you will ever see. And I think that was both Cam and circumstances. And you're hoping that if it is, if it does need to be Cam at the end of the day, that they can get beyond that and be better and more diverse on offense. All right. A couple of other things that I wanted to hit. And I see some people saying, well, you know, everybody's dumping on Cam, but he's the first guy to sign as a free agent quarterback, blah, 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 blah. And Bill must believe in, in Cam, you know, more than he believes in some of these other quarterbacks because he brings him in and not Jimmy G. And not again, we'll address it just in case you're joining us right now. Cam's the guy that's available in this right. moment. It, it's not that it's not that Bill Belichick believes that Cam is better than Jimmy G or any other quarterback that you could possibly get down the road which is, again, why we keep saying they're going to leave the door open at quarterback. This doesn't mean that mm -hmm. Cam's the guy. It's just that Cam was the most attainable dude right now that they think will help them sell some free agents. The, the, the idea, though, that I wanted to get to, Greg, and we've been talking about this since really the end of the season. We go back a couple of months ago. Again, I, I urge people to listen to the Greg Bedard Patriots podcast because Greg does a great job getting intel, and he told us months ago, he told us months ago saying, all right, Belichick knows that he was wrong. Belichick knows that this offense was a disaster. Belichick knows that this offense needs a hell of a lot more than what they've had in the past couple of years. And I think, Greg, we've been talking and carrying that thread for the last couple of months about the Patriots are going to be very active. They're going to be bringing in bigger names. They're going to look for legit receivers. And I think, Greg, with this move, 
it tells us yet again, it reinforces the idea that the Patriots are going to load up at wide receiver and tight end because we know who Belichick is blaming for last year. He's not blaming Cam. He's bringing right. Cam back. So, you know, he's telling us that the that the problem with the offense last season wasn't Cam. It was the people that was, you know, that were surrounding Cam. And so I think this is another indication, Greg, maybe you agree or disagree, but this to me is another indication that Belichick is going to go hard into this offseason. And when he goes shopping for receivers, he's going to go shopping for legit dudes, not guys he can get on the cheap, but guys that he can surround Cam or maybe another quarterback and say, this offense will be better because we have better talent. I, I, I completely agree with you, Nick. I think that if people wanted to know what Bill Belichick thought of the offense last year and what the problems were, bringing Cam Newton back tells you that Belichick believes that it was the job that he did at GM, you know, and, and credit Belichick for not being ashamed and not being, uh, you know, beyond his ego where he couldn't admit that. And I think this tells you Belichick looks last year and, and, you know, what I was telling you guys for the past couple months that, you know, Belichick has realized, look, I, you know, I've screwed the pooch on offense. We had no tight ends. The drafted tight ends that we had didn't work. They could work this year. We'll see. But we didn't have enough on the outside. I mean, we have Jacoby Myers. Who knows with Julian Edelman? But beyond that, we really don't have anything. And so Bill is basically saying, like, look, I screwed up. And, you know, Cam, I feel bad about what I did last year, how much I paid you, what I surrounded you with. Let's let's see if if we can't do something else. But, again, you know, the bottom line is people need to realize that this is not – this is not taking anything off the quarterback table at this point. Everything is still on the table. Plan A, Jimmy Garoppolo. Plan B could be Gardner Minshew or what have you. But like you said, this is Cam's what's available right now. They stood back and they said, all right, well, may, right now the 49ers aren't getting rid of Garoppolo. The Jets haven't shown their hand on Sam Darnold. Are they? Do, maybe they want him. Maybe they're not even going to draft a quarterback. Maybe they trade down and they go with Sam Darnold. Um, you know, the the Dolphins probably don't have an option there. Are the, do the maybe the Jaguars don't want to get rid of Gardner Minshew? Maybe he, they think he's the best backup for Trevor Lawrence. We might not have a shot at any of those guys that we like, but. Right now, out of the guys available, yeah, we could get Marcus Mariota, but he's screwing around with his contract and he won't tear it up and we don't like what they're doing there. That's going down a bad road and we don't even like them that much. So what else do we have right now entering free agency? Are we really going to go into the new league year with Jared Stidham at quarterback? And at the end of the day, Belichick said that's not a good option for us. Cam at least helps us, even if it's this much, Cam helps us with the players around the league that we might attract signing. You know, you talked about signing wide receivers and tight ends. I wouldn't preclude a, a trade for like an Allen Robinson under the tag or something like that. So all options are the ta are on the table. And Cam, whatever you think of him on the field as a starting quarterback in the NFL, you can't deny that Cam has cachet around the league. Right. And that helps the Patriots starting on Monday. Yeah. Where is sports going? Where is sports headed? Whether you like this or not, everybody, it's about friendships. It's about relationships. It's about you know, respect from player to player. And again, I know a lot of people are going to get wrapped up into this idea that Cam stunk last year, and he did. Neither Greg nor I are trying to sell you on this idea that Cam was awesome last season. That's not what we're saying. That is not the narrative. The narrative right now is the Patriots are going shopping. Monday is the beginning of free agency. That's when teams can tamper. We'll start learning of deals on Monday. It'll be official on Wednesday, quote unquote, yep. but we'll start learning about deals on Monday. Timing matters. Context matters. The reason why the Patriots made this deal when they did, why do you think we're hearing about it on Friday before free agency? Just pull your personal feelings out of it. Pull your own emotions out of it. Pull your own evaluation of Cam Newton out of this conversation for a minute. Why do you think we got this news today? Nobody's shopping for Cam. Nobody's knocking down the door. Ron Rivera was asked about it yesterday, and he pretty much dismissed it. So why was the news today? The news was today, and Greg, correct me if I'm wrong. The news was today because over this weekend, phone calls are being made, deals are getting closer, and the Patriots needed somebody in that room that they could sell 
to the prospective free agent. That's why the deal yep. was today. That's what, you know, this deal could have happened three months from now. Think about it. Think about what the timeline tells us. They needed somebody in that room before Monday. And out of all the options that they had, Cam, whether you like him or not, he was the best option at this point. So that's why it's announced today because they want to get this. It's getting the ducks in a row. And it's, it's about friendships. OBJ, for example, Greg, how many times have we talked about it? <laughs> Beck, Beckham loves Cam. So mm -hmm. it, it's not about, you know, it's not about how I feel about Cam or, or Greg feels about Cam or how you feel about Cam. If Odell Beckham loves himself some Cam Newton and Belichick wants to bring in OBJ, then bringing Cam in again makes it much easier to bring OBJ in. That's what it's about, man. Curtis Samuel, same thing. Like, it's about relationships. Those guys believe in Cam. And so the Patriots know that. And so they're trying to get ready for what's about to happen over the next, I don't know, four or five days. I, I Look, I Nick, I, I agree with you. And, you know, we could probably wind up here. But I think yeah. the bottom line is people, you know, don't overreact. Um, don't put, set aside, like you said, set aside your feeling. You know, the NFL receipt. whoever they are, or tight ends, they don't care. They just know that Cam Newton won a Heisman at Auburn, went to the Super Bowl, won an MVP. He, you know, he he represents cool in the NFL, and that appeals to a lot of guys. And guys, trust me, and let, we haven't talked about this, but let me just regurgitate this thing about what you heard behind the scenes with Cam Newton. The Patriots and their players, they love Cam Newton. They do. They love him. His leadership was unbelievable behind the scenes. I mean, people just said, you you know, I'd hear, you'd be blown away. I can't believe that. Like, you know, all this stuff about Cam Newton, and that matters. And that is going to the, – the Patriots today, after signing Cam Newton, are a more appealing team to NFL players than they were yesterday without Cam Newton yep. and with just Jared Stidham. And that's what moves about. It doesn't preclude them from doing anything else at quarterback. Do do I know? Do they even know whether they're going to do anything else at quarterback? No. And that's part of this deal right now where they have someone in place. The specter was there. If they waited for free agency, somebody could have come out of the woodwork and say, you know what, Cam, we want you to be our high-end back backup. And now the Patriots would have been really screwed. At least – they know what they're doing. They know somebody who's been there. The other players know him, whether it's, you know, uh, Jacoby Myers and Edelman and all these guys. He has a rapport. He's a known entity. And now the Patriots at least have a baseline. Now we need to see what else they need to do, what else they're going to do. But people just need to be patient and see what the whole picture looks like. Right. Perfectly said. And I think, again, as far as the money, we're talking about six to seven million dollars on the base. You, you'll hear a lot about fourteen million. That's if everything comes together. That's if he wins awards and they make the playoffs and they make a deep run. That's yep. when you talk about the fourteen million. And if you look around the NFL, six million bucks on the base is pretty much the going rate for a high end backup quarterback. So let, let's all keep it reasonable. And I know it's very tough to do in twenty twenty one, but try to keep it grounded.